So now we have the model that we want to manipulate. So that's going to be the servers. And then we have a way to manipulate it by using the JPA repository by creating this server repository that we're calling server repo. The next thing we have to do is to define the different functionalities that we want to have in the application. And to do this, we can define a service and then we define methods that's going to represent the different features that we want to have in the application. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the main package and create another package. And then I'm going to name it service press enter and inside of the service package, I'm going to create a server service and that's going to be an interface. So I'm going to select interface and then I'm going to name it server service and press enter. So inside of this service, I'm going to define all the different functionalities or features that I want the application to have. So I'm going to go down and I want to be able to save a server in a database. So we're going to create a function that's going to return a server and it's going to call it create. And this is going to take the server that the user is trying to save. So we're going to give it a server and what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and create the server and then save it in the database. So let's go ahead and import this and that's supposed to come from our model and everything looks good. Next, we we want to be able to list all the servers. We're going to create something that's going to return a collection of servers. So we're going to say server and let's just call this list. So it's going to list all the servers and I'm going to make it take a limit, which is going to be an integer and I'm going to call it limit. Now you could make this take a page because we can also return a page to the user. But in this case, I just want to limit the number of servers or the number of rows that I'm returning when I try to call this method to list all of the servers. So let's say if I pass this limit to be 10. So if I have, for example, 100 servers in the database, then it's going to give me the first 10. It's not going to give me all the 100. And then I'm going to define another one that's going to also return a server that I'm going to call get. And this is just going to take the ID of the server that we want to find. So that's going to be the ID. And and then another one that's going to return the server is going to be update and this is going to also take the server so we can give it a server to update and it's going to take that server with the updated information and it's going to save it in a database and lastly i need one to delay the server so it's going to return a boolean true or false i'm going to call it delete and it's also going to take the ID of the server. So we just give it the ID. It's going to go in the database, find the server by that ID and then delete it. And as you can see, this is an interface. So we're not really implementing anything. This is just functionalities that we're laying down that we want to have in the application. So we want to have a way to implement these functionalities so that we can actually use them. And that's why we created the repo because with the repo we can create, we can list, we can get, we can update and delete. So we're going to create an implementation of this server service and then using the server repository, we'll be able to create an implementation for all of these functionalities or features that we just defined. And you can define as many functionalities or features as you want in this class, and you can implement all of them, or you can just implement some of them. But in my case, I only need these five. So I'm just going to define these five and then implement them. So in the same service folder where we have the server service, let's create another folder and I'm just going to call it implementation. And inside of the implementation, I'm going to create the server service implementation. So server service implementation and press enter. And of course, this is going to implement the server service. So we're going to say implement server service. So now once we implement the server service, of course, we have to implement all the methods inside of the service. As you can see, IntelliJ is helping me here. And you can see we have all of the methods that are coming from the server service. So all these methods now we have to implement them in the server service implementation because we're implementing this interface server service. So before we actually try to implement everything here, there is one important method that I forgot to put in, which is the method to ping the server. So let's go back into the service and right below the first method. I'm going to create another function. I'm going to call it ping and it's going to return the server that we're pinging and it's going to take the IP address. So we're going to say IP address. So we're going to give it an IP address and what it's going to do is it's going to try to ping that server and then return the server that we were just trying to ping. So it's going to go in the database, find the server by that IP address and then ping the server and then return the pinged server. And the reason that I'm returning the ping server, it's because in case the status has changed, I can also show that updated status in the UI whenever I get this return server back to me. So now we have to go to the implementation and then add this one method. So implement method the ping, click OK, and you can see that it's added right here. So now we have all of the functionalities that we want, and now we just have to implement them.